Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. When I knew that episode 666 was coming up, the first person that I thought of was Dirk Manning. And so, Dirk, thank you for, for coming on and making this a special commemorative episode of spooky things and creepy numbers and horror. Well, no, no, thank you. And congratulations to you for, for having 666 episodes, for starters. Well, thanks, um, thanks. That is not a small feat. I, uh, you know, I don't have a medium setting. I just, I go, I do. I, I, that's why you and I get along, my friend. So no, so congratulations on that. And then that aside, thank you for having me on for episode uh, 666. Yes, uh, absolutely. So, yeah, when, when, when you when you messaged me, I know we were talking about getting together again. And then when you said that episode was coming up, I was like, there it is. It's, yep, it's, yeah. let, let's let's roll. And Stay it was on perfect. Brand. And you also have a new project to talk about. So that's even better. Yeah, yeah. The timing's impeccable. Uh, as of this going uh, live on the air, mm -hmm. we will be launching uh, Homestead, which will be, I believe, depending on how you count, I think my 22nd graphic novel. Nice. This is nice. a, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It is a um, Native American Western uh, werewolf graphic novel. 100 page original graphic novel written by me, uh, illustrated by co creator Les Linden Gardner, uh, colored by Colin Johnson, lettered by David Lentz. Our Lakota creative consultant, Rob Blackhawk, has been instrumental and bringing this story to life the way that I always envisioned it. Uh, lettered by Dave Lentz, edited by Drina Joe, published by Sourcepoint Press. You can check it out at homesteadcomic, all one word, dot com, or go to Kickstarter and type in Homestead. And uh, I imagine we will come up, and uh, it's a really cool project. I'm really excited about this. This is a book I've wanted to do for many years, and I'm, I'm excited that 20-plus books into my career I'm now to the point where I can bring this graphic novel to fruition the way I've always envisioned it. Yeah, that's very cool. Congratulations on that. You were congratulating me, but 22 graphic novels, that's quite a long haul of creating. And I'll, of course, link the Kickstarter in this video as well as in the show description. But I also have to say, good on you for having uh, an authentic voice from the Lakota community, being part of the project. That is a very, very wonderful thing as well. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, I'm very fortunate. Um, I, I met Rao uh, online and, uh, you know, actively looking for that. This is, a, as I mentioned a moment ago, Homestead is a book I wanted to do for a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, originally, the original concept was maybe going to be one of the short stories for Nightmare World, which also just got a re-release with Nightmare World, a complete collection, now available mm -hmm. while the books are sold. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there was originally like a very, like an eight-page version of the story. But it didn't really fit for that. So then my thought was to make it a one-shot, which I actually wrote a one-shot script for it, and it would be part of uh, Love Stories to Die For, which will be re-released later this year also, since it's also out of print, is Love Stories About Death. But again, a 22-page story wasn't quite doing it justice, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, eventually I decided this needed to be a, a, a full-blown you know, mini-series, you know, four issues or so, about 100 pages, and this is a story that's lived with me for a very long time. And uh, in fact, Les will tell you, I first even talked to him about being the illustrator on this this project and he became co-creator with me. I want to say probably close to 10 years ago. Oh, wow. And I said, so and I said we're going process. to... Yeah, yeah. And I said, we're going to get there, brother. We're going to get there. I promise you. He was working on Apocalypse Girl. I had all kinds of projects lined up. But I said, I want to get there. But to your point... It it was a thing where even all the amount of, of research that I had done and stuff like that, no, it, it never quite sat totally right with me, given the very strong presence of of the Lakota culture in the in the, the book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I made the decision. I said, you know, like you said, to really do this. I want to make sure that what I'm doing is authentic. Uh, the spoilers for those of you that don't see me on screen. I'm a middle aged white guy from the Midwest. So <laughs> while I am not writing about the Lakota experience. That is not something I can do. I can and do write about, in part, uh, members of the Lakota tribe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. having an experience. But again, it was important to me to have the authenticity. Uh, I met Rao. We talked, and, and and I guess the best way I can kind of encapsulate this whole thing, 
15 or plus years, you know, I'd been kind of putting this book together and I give him the scripts. I'm all excited. And one of the first things he says, he goes, well, I read it. And he goes, I really like the story. You've done a very great job with this, which I'm so thankful, so appreciative. Mm-hmm. He goes, but what, what's this word? I said, oh, well, my, my impression is that's the, the, the Sioux or Lakota word for, uh, for X. I'm not going to say what the word is, mm-hmm. uh, but for blank. And he goes, uh, no. <laughs> right. And I'm like, I cross-referenced this like I, I wasn't challenging him, but I said, I'm I'm surprised because I've cross-referenced this, right? And yeah. for like years and I've done all this research all over the internet. I said, I believe you, obviously. I said, but I just have to tell you, I'm shocked because I really did a lot of research on this. And everywhere on the internet, that's that's everything I've read of the internet, that's the word, which was nowhere close to the to the real word. And I said, uh, I said, you know, you you live this, obviously. Why why do you why do you think that everywhere I look, the word's not right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He said to me, and, and it and it really was humbling and, and heartbreaking, truthfully, is he goes, no one cares. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a powerful sentiment. And, and it's really something that I think also strikes to the backbone of, of what Homestead is about. It's about a, um, uh, a family, a gentleman who is given land as part of the Homestead Act in North Dakota in 1868. Mm-hmm. And that land was given him by the U.S. government, but it was also land that was occupied. Uh, I guess the closest word we would have that would be occupied, but it was traversed by, by the Lakota people. And um, the Lakota people, upon seeing this first homesteading family come out there, most of them are like, hey, you know, uh, this land is everybody's land. But there's a very zealous uh, medicine man and uh, warrior who's kind of a protege of his and, and very close to him that are very concerned that the, the settlers may disrupt and eventually eradicate their way of life and mm-hmm. them as a culture. Mm-hmm. Spoiler. <laughs> so um, right. they decide to go to um, very supernatural means, to very extreme measures to try to drive away this first homesteading family before more come in which obviously is where we get into the whole werewolf aspect of things and, and things kind of spiral out of, out of control from there. And um, pretty intense story that I'm really excited about And And Rao's input on this was, was wonderful. His blessing on the, on the original skeleton of the story was great. Mm-hmm. Less his artwork as people see by the cover alone is jaw dropping. He's an amazing artist. And, and this book is just putting him on another level. Um, I don't know if I should talk about this publicly, but I guess I will now at least. And um, <laughs> he actually, he, he's been public online too about this. He actually had a stroke during the book. Oh, wow. Yeah. And finished the book. Wow. With one arm. And he, I don't want to tell his story, but I will tell you, he said, look, it goes, if this is the last thing that ever comes out for me, I need people to know what I can do. Mm-hmm. So, People that know me know that like the crow was a very foundational part of my comic book DNA because of the passion that is on the page. And I do not say this lightly when I compare Homestead to the crow in regards to just the, uh, the, the raw emotion and passion on the page with Wes, who was concerned that this may be the last thing he would ever produce. Now he's gone on to produce much more work since, since this book and, and he's doing very well. He's a beast. You know, <laughs> he like has the spirit of the wolf. Like right? Yeah. <laughs> but for um, sure. so this is a very, in terms of subject matter, but even in terms of the creation of the book, a very visceral, very emotionally investing book that, uh, that I'm really, really excited for people to be able to get on Kickstarter and then, you know, uh, check it out at homesteadcomic.com. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, if it is okay with you, speaking of the art, I'll actually put the cover about right here at this point if people are watching the video. So do not adjust your sets. I've not turned into a werewolf. It's just the cover. (laughs) Um, And I've seen the cover online. It it looks really great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even that's something. This book has been drawn for a while. Um, Obviously, anybody that knows, pays any attention to the comic industry knows that the paper prices have been through the roof and Mm -hmm. schedules had to be reshuffled and things like that. So we've been sitting on this book for a minute and um, Les just continues to level up to an even just indescribable exponential degree. And and as you can see by the cover, Les did the cover, Les also did the interiors of the book. 
this is um he's been getting his Bernie Wrightson on. That's another uh, name I do not invoke lightly. Yeah, uh, in yeah. regards to comic books, but but it fits for this. And uh, this whole team's fired on all cylinders on this book. And uh, again, one and done graphic novel. So people that aren't familiar with my work, again, people may say, "Oh my gosh, Dirk Manning has twenty two graphic novels. Now where do I start?" Look at that cover. Homesteadcomic.com. Mm-hmm. I mean, one and done book. This is the book. Uh, and it's a very emotionally investing horror graphic novel. And it's uh, this is as good as a place to start as, as any place to start in my career. If you're looking for a very emotionally investing horror graphic novel, this is going to be this is going to be what you want. And if things like rights and if things like The Crow are of interest to you, this is your book. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, the, and then you can make your way around to to hope and to mystery and, and all of the other ones. But absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, so you talked about that process of the book coming together. What What is it like when the stars align and you kind of had this project in mind for 10 years and then you get to actually be involved in the creative process and bring it to life? Yeah, it, it, it felt really good and it felt right. Like I said, when I first met Les about 10 years ago, I said, "We're gonna. I have a book for you. And he goes, what is it? Because he knew me a little bit already. And I said, it's a, I can't get too much into it, but it's a Native American western werewolf book and you could have just knocked him over with the feathers like dude i want to start right now and i told him i said i'm not there yet i said respectfully you have some things to do still as well i said we're going to get there man but i'm telling you right now we're going to get there so ever since that moment i was putting homestead together in my mind with less as the artist and again then meeting rao um online um, I, I just went to some online forums where, uh, you know, uh, Lakota people, Lakota culture gathered. I said, this is going to sound weird, uh, but I am a comic book writer and I am looking for someone who is interested in comics, who's mm-hmm. interested in horror, who could ha- just help help me kind of fact check and make sure that I'm being, you know, uh, appropriate in my depiction of the, 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 uh, the proud Lakota people. And, and Rao has a history in comic books. He's uh, we have a lot in common. He's also like a metalhead and stuff like that. We actually kind of ran it. It ends up we ran in the same circles, and um, yeah, just everything coming together. I think it's really testament. And 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 again, you know, a lot of people may know me for I'll be a shill again, shocking for people who don't know me. But this book I write, right or wrong, mm-hmm. I talk a lot in right or wrong about how um, the process of writing and how sometimes you have to you have to wait till. The, you have to wait for the time is right, but you also have to act with a certain amount of urgency in, in regards to getting the thing done and getting it out. Yeah. Right? I say all the time, the only thing better than a perfect book is a finished book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Homestead to me, because of the nature of the story, was one of the few exceptions where I don't want to say it had to be perfect because I think that sets too high of a bar, but it had to be just right. Yeah. And right, getting to the point where meeting now and and working with Green and Joe on multiple projects now, uh, you know, uh, it's no coincidence I've been nominated for an Eisner three times, and, and Green and Joe is the editor on all of them. You know, we'll we'll fight like cats and dogs sometimes. You know, it's like almost like a like a um like a tussle, like a like a, like a brother <laughs> sister almost thing, but like two best friends, you know, like going at it. Mm-hmm. But but my writing is stronger in working with her. And again, Les's artwork 10 years ago, roughly, it was like, look, man, I you're going to be the guy. And then meeting Rao and then and then and then source point and and even even the Kickstarter model existing and 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 me being knock on wood, but to a place in my career where I can comfortably launch this book as an original graphic novel. Mm-hmm. Originally, we were going to do this as a four-issue miniseries to source point press, then do the graphic novel. I've never been overly fond of serializing most of my work as issues mm-hmm. there is a time and a place for it we did it with the first volume of hope we did it with one of the volumes of tales in the street back in the day we did the first issue of cthulhu jr uh, you know for uh, halloween comic fest that's fine but to me to get to release homestead directly as a hundred page graphic novel ogn right off the jump mm-hmm. to answer your question a, a very uh long answer to short question it just feels like a synchronicity it feels great it's like this is the time for this book um again a synchronicity 
if you think back on the timeline, when I tell you about 15 years ago is when I really wanted to kind of first write this story, even longer ago than that, it was, it was a nightmare world story. Originally, mm -hmm. this thing happened that stopped me from, thankfully stopped me from publishing the original short version of the story. There was this other native American werewolf thing that kind of happened about 20 ish years ago called twilight. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That one. Yeah. <laughs> and literally it was like, Ooh, well, Got to put this on the shelf for at least a decade, you know. Right, right. You know, <laughs> give so it some time. The, the synchronicity of it all, and 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 for this book to be in this place in my bibliography, you know, like you said, coming after the second volume of Hope, coming after the 20th anniversary of Nightmare World, coming out after five volumes of Tales of Mystery, but then also coming out after the Adventures of Cthulhu Junior, right? Uh, the Arn Anderson book, you know, Butts and Seats. It's just in that right spot, so it feels really. I feel really good about this. I'm really excited about this one. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I think I have one more official question and we can hit anything that we've missed. And it's sort of a, a genre question because I, I love comics. I'm always interested in comics and hearing perspectives. And you are a person who does, again, the scary books, the horror genre. And uh, so I'm curious, what makes comics the ideal medium for telling that kind of story? In some ways, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, uh, I, I joke, but I don't. Mm -hmm. um, I love the comic book medium. You know, you can see in my office, I'm surrounded by comic books. And yeah, yeah, my, my Godzilla Blu-rays back here, stuff like that. I, love, I like movies too. And I like prose novels. But Harvey Picard said it best, that comics are words and pictures. Mm -hmm. And you can do anything with words and pictures. And when you look back at some of the most foundational elements of comic books, horror short stories and horror books are are right there, again, in the DNA of the medium, uh -huh. right? Your uh -huh. Tales from the Crypt of Twilight Zone. Countless. I was just at uh, my local comic shop a couple of weeks ago, and they bought this huge collection. Huge. I mean, there must have been 50 or 60 long boxes at least. And there were just these old monster comics that I like, like not even monster comics, like supernatural horror comics I'd never heard of. Like, I, I, there's even name like ghosts or or spooky or whatever, you know. Like, oh my god, like Steve Ditko did some of these, and oh, oh god, you know, just, um, I love that stuff. But what's tricky about doing horror in a comic book, and I think this is what a lot of people, if they don't pay attention to it, they they fumble this. You can't control the pacing. In a comic book, mm -hmm. right? I, I I can I can pick up hope, and if I want, I can do this. How does this end? Holy! Oh my gosh! That's how it ends. Mm -hmm. And then go back and read it. But it kind of takes that that shock ending out of the first volume away from you. A movie, uh, especially in the theater, right? You 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 don't get the viewer doesn't control the pacing. The director yeah. controls the pacing. Mm -hmm. So in a comic book, you have to be very intentional about how you tell the story to try to pull them in in a way that they they still go at the pacing you want them to and mm -hmm. sticking your beats either on a page turn or the last panel of the page to get them to turn that page, to give them the big, the big shock and things like that. Um, and that's something that you have to be very conscientious of. And I love that challenge. Yeah, yeah. I love that cool. challenge. I, I love to be able to draw them into it. I'm a huge fan of uh, like Jinji Ito, one of the masters of horror. I think we've maybe talked about him on your on your podcast before. Mm -hmm. um, he did things like Uzumaki and, and Gaio and things like that. And he's a master of horror comics. I mean, if you love horror comics, go get homesteadcomic.com. Then go get something by Jinji Ito, you know? Yeah, yeah. But he tells the stories and he, that he just makes you sit in the panel. And then you start getting nervous and you start like reading faster even. <laughs> then you're like, then you get these fake, you know, he just, he's a master. And I love that challenge. And I love, obviously there, there's a thing in comics where you're working without a budget, right? Mm -hmm. You can do anything you want on the comic page as long as someone will, will draw it. And as long as you're respectfully earnest about drawing it. But uh, it, it really is that, that, that challenge. And the fact that also when you get to those big moments in a comic, you can sit on them. Mm -hmm. and you can mm -hmm. savor them and that's what's great right in a horror movie you might get like the big horror reveal but you see the monster for like three seconds that's gone so like later you go back and be like me like you're whining like you know like like looking like studying the monster in cloverfield or whatever right like or oh my right, god right. You know? 
So you have to know going into a comic, again, when, when you get to that point where there is that scene, you have to be comfortable with the fact that they may sit on that page for a minute. They may sit on that page for five minutes and just look at it. Just like, whoa, wow, look what he did there, you know, and then appreciate the art and the coloring and things like that. You know, looking at Colin Johnson's coloring, looking at Les's line work, looking at Dave's letters, right? Whatever it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That excites me. That excites yeah. me that you're creating this piece of work that people can savor at their own pace. And again, when you can hook them in and get them to go at the pace you want, but then when they look back at it and say, I just need to look at that book again. Every right. book here in my office, every book in here, I own because I like to go back and look at them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, and again, you're a book person too. You know, it's like, I, to be fair, I also do buy books like I'm going to be immortal, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? But the books I own are the ones that I, I want to live with, and I want to live with them. And I just want to pick it up and just sometimes it's read it, sometimes it's go to certain read certain scenes, sometimes yeah. it's just as a comic book, pick it up and just look at it and look at the storytelling structure and and look how they plot they they paste that scene and that that's what I love about horror and comics because I think I think horror, in my opinion, speaks to the human condition better than than I would say a lot of other genres. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you get to create that on the page and create that with a team as great as a team I'm working on with this book and creating a book that I think is so important as this book is, it's that, that this is, this is peak comic book creation as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Love the idea of savoring the page and uh, I'm wishing you well with Homestead and much more work to come. Much more work to come. I appreciate you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, anything that we've missed that you want to make sure to mention before we close out of episode 666? Uh, again, homesteadcomic.com. The campaign will be running for a couple weeks. Uh, keep in mind that whenever I run a Kickstarter, the only way to get the hardcover edition of the book is on Kickstarter. So by packing, backing a Dirkman Kickstarter, you're going to get the hardcover edition of the book, as well as some stretch goal extras that usually remain exclusive to people that pre-order the book on Kickstarter. Uh, the book will be later available in trade paperback form wherever books are sold. And people can check out more of my work at DirkManning.com, Facebook, Instagram, God help me even zitter, at Dirk Manning. Uh, look for the picture of the guy at the top hat and the scarf. But but again, um, if you you know you run a very great podcast and you have a litany of great guests on here, if this book sounds at all enticing, I would say that if you're not familiar with my work, this is a great place to start. And if you are familiar with my work, this is going to be another pinnacle Dirk Manning and Friends production. So thank you for having me on. My pleasure. My pleasure, Dirk. Anytime. Always glad to talk with you. And thanks so much for the time. Thank you.